Okay, we made a massive mistake. Good morning, everyone. Fancy seeing you here. It is a very, very quiet Sunday morning. It's early in the morning, and today we are heading to the amazingly beautiful palace of Versailles. So today we're going to be showing you how we got there, what we get up to, and what we eat. Are you ready, Ambie? It's early in the morning. Yes, I'm hungry. <laughs> yes, I am hungry and ready for Versailles as well. Let's go. All right, back to the morning time. There are many ways to get to Versailles and it depends on where you stay in Paris. Paris is a big city, of course, but because our apartment's around Le Marais, we have to take two trains there. So firstly, we're gonna be taking the RERA to La Défense station and then taking the L train from La Défense to Versailles Rive Droite. There's a lot of stations at Versailles, but this one's the closest to the Notre Dame market where we plan on getting breakfast. But I believe you can also take the Metro Line 3 to another train station, which I forgot about, I'll put it down there, and then take the L train from there to Versailles. Okay, we made a massive mistake. Um, I didn't actually realize this, but I had a feeling, and my feelings were true. Um, La Défense, the station we're actually in, is outside zone one of the Paris metro system, so our Navigo cards aren't actually eligible for that zone. So now we're gonna have to backtrack back to the city zone and take a train to uh, one of the other train stations. Uh, so don't make a stupid mistake like we did, but I hope you learn from it. <laughs> Well, I hate life. Let's start again. <laughs> oh, it works. So here's where we should have transferred this morning, Gar Saint Lazare. <laughs> okay, tickets, tickets. Okay, it's this train over here. <laughs> Finally! Yeah, yeah, we have our train! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, go in. Just watch out, um, Google Maps does not tell you what zones there are in Paris, and uh, we learned the hard way. We'll probably still make it for our 9 o'clock appointment. I believe this train leaves at 8.09. It should take around 40 minutes. So what we should have done originally is take the metro, whatever metro is closest to you, I think ours was the line three to Gare Saint Lazare, which is, which is where we are now, and then take the L train all the way to the end station. You know, best friend, the important thing is the. Uh, it may not be about the destination. Sometimes it's about the journey, don't you think? <laughs> he ignored me. <laughs> Okay, this is an absolutely massive market. It's got everything. Fruits, uh, roasted chickens, vegetables, eggs, cheeses, meats. Oh, it sucks that we got here late because I really want to spend some time here, but maybe we'll do that after Versailles. So how's the quiche Lorraine? It's alright, but like, we need to eat. Yeah. This is quite satisfying. Okay, we got our food and we're making a beeline to Versailles. We're literally trying to eat as we walk. I got a kind of like a risotto and some meatballs. I can see the palace right down that boulevard. Okay, this is the rise. It's okay. You know, it's supposed to season a bit more, but it has like some mushrooms. And the meatballs, which isn't like a tomato sauce. Oh, come on, come on. Mm. It's decent. 
was not the romantic, appreciative um, journey of Versailles I was hoping for. Eating takeaway food from the market on the way. Well, I still have food in my mouth. It was rude. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's 9.33. We made it. We're technically late, but they still let us in, so... The main you know. reason why we're a little bit more late is because the woman's toilet had such a long line. Yes. Classic woman thing. <laughs> That's true. That's nice, isn't it? Apparently, according to TripAdvisor, just download the free Rick Steves audio guide. Our boy Rick Steves coming through with the free audio guide in his app. Hi, I'm Rick Steves. Oh my... Oh no, my gosh. That's... Oh, that's massive. Where do we go first? Does it say where to go first? Not really. Just go where the, the wind, wind takes, takes us. us. Okay. Let's go. So, we find ourselves at the Hall of Mirrors. Beautiful, right? Back then, obviously, mirrors were a pretty uh, big novelty back then. I was listening to the uh, Rick Steves audio guide. The nobles loved the mirrors here because it came from an age when nobles started to like looking at themselves. Sounds awfully familiar now. The Hall of Mirrors was a ballroom overlooking the outside of Versailles, and the mirrors reflect the outside and uh, illuminate and uh, give some nice natural light to this uh, room. Was this not an Emily in Paris? This was not Emily in Paris when they had that runway show with a... Wasn't, it wasn't Pierre Cadot, it was his rival. The other guy. The other guy. That was not Pierre Cadot. Yeah. Shout out to the artisans and um, artworks and craftsmen who made Versailles possible, all to fuel one man's ego and that was the King Louis XIV. The Sun King. Did you know Versailles was basically dedicated to one person, and one person only? It's Louis XIV. Apparently, King Louis XIV didn't like talking about poverty at Versailles, because you know, why you care for the. Uh... He didn't care about being relatable. No, he just cared about being a king and, you know, being real powerful and rich and living the good life here at Versailles. It's me. <laughs> It's, I, I didn't do it, I swear. I didn't do it. I didn't vandalize Versailles. And also, in a Queen Marie Antoinette's room, you could watch the Queen conceive babies in public. Because apparently, that's apparently to uh, prove their blue-bloodedness, apparently. Weird. Okay. <laughs> Okay, after the uh, palace itself, we find ourselves at the very beautiful uh, gallery of battles. As the name suggests, there's a lot of paintings from different years in France's history outlining famous battles. Do they have Waterloo? They don't have Waterloo. That's cause you know what happened at Waterloo. <laughs> Waterloo! Napoleon, 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 Napoleon. Oh, there's... Yeah, exactly. It just ends there at 1809. Waterloo's missing, obviously. Get out of my stupid way. It is actually quite funny that over such a short period of time that the French army has gained a reputation for surrendering all the time. You know, France and the white flag is very synonymous nowadays as a meme. In no small part probably due to the uh, Nazi capture of Paris and occupation of France in World War II. But actually, the French army is the most successful army the world has ever seen. They have won the most battles in the world. You know, obviously Napoleon's empire, one of the most impressive in history. I wouldn't call empires impressive, but they are actually the most successful army in the world. So it's just funny how reputations uh, change so quickly.
palace is done, we're gonna go to the gardens next. But first, as you exit, there's an Angelina, actually. Um, if you didn't know, Angelina is one of the most famous tea houses, ca cafes in Paris. They do that legendary hot chocolate that you've probably seen on reviews, TikTok, and social media, whatnot. It's not the social um, Angelina's experience that people associate with Angelina, but we don't really care. They actually have like a snack room and a dining room, and the hot chocolate was cheaper here, but it also doesn't come with the cream. I mean, it's hot chocolate. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Interesting. Like, it's very... I mean... It's okay. Yeah, it's like if you bought like a cheap chocolate bar and melted it with sugar and stuff. Yeah. The, the kids will love it. Yeah. We did get some pastries, a croissant and a pain chocolat. I will dip the croissant just a little bit. I also just got an oat latte just for a bit of a caffeine fix and you know just to go with the pastries. Uh, it just tastes watered down, which is odd because it has like oat milk. We're in an Angelinas. This is like the coffee that you get at the Continental Breakfast at a Best Western. Yeah, it's just like a capsule coffee. I'm just kind of amazed how like watery this tastes, which is really weird because it's not a American, like it's not a long black. But you know, hey. Okay, let's hope we have our saving grace with our pain chocolat. Can't go too wrong, right? You can go too wrong. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Why can't I taste chocolate? I'm gonna take another bite just to make sure I'm not tripping. Just cause like I can't taste chocolate. This way. <laughs> that is like the most tasteless palm chocolate I've ever had. It's fine because we, well it's not fine, but at least we have hot chocolate to kind of make up for it, I guess. We didn't expect it to be amazing or anything because we just wanted food in our system, but still. Hi, best friend. All right, we have finally made it outside to the very impressive uh, Versailles Gardens. Very amazing. That's where the Hall of Mirrors was, just that front of the building where. Also, just disclaimer, I cannot speak for the actual Angelina Cafe in actual Paris city, so I don't know, just go if you want. But that one was pretty trash, I must say so myself. But yeah, it's a very nice, lavish, very grand garden. All sorts of shaped hedges and fountains and pools. Obviously, it probably doesn't look as good as it can be because it is the winter time. You can just see as far as the eye can see, just leads all the way down. It's giving Pride and Prejudice. Well, you but know. in France. Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> so our original plan to explore the massive gardens was to actually hire a golf cart because you can hire like small electric vehicles for I think 34 years an hour. And um, apparently they don't, they don't have it today. We're just gonna take the mini train, which definitely <laughs> isn't as fun and independent, but whatever, I don't, I can't be bothered walking this massive garden. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fun. Anyway, let's go. Oh, there it is, train time. Our chaperone is here. <sighs> You know, maybe the royals had primitive horses. We have a futuristic electric vehicle. This is luxury that even the royals couldn't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, this is not the. Uh... <laughs> it's okay. 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 Stop. 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 <laughs> It's not the image of luxury I was envisioning.
uh, we have gotten off the train. Um, it has a couple of stops, one at the Grand Canal, one at the uh, Grand Trianon, and we are here at the uh, Petit Trianon, which we are gonna explore, and we're gonna slowly make our way around the gardens, maybe to the Grand Trianon, Trianon next, and then to the canal. Oh, this is so massive. It's gonna be a lot of steps today. We love it, Yambi. A small house. A modest house. Modest. You know, when you're tired of the courtly life at the at the actual palace, you go to your small house. Away from the uh, hustle and bustle of Versailles Palace. When one room is bigger than your house. <laughs> we don't even own a house. <laughs> Who said there still wasn't a queen strolling these gardens? I hate you. Shut up! Alright, the Grand Trianon, as its name suggests, not just the building, but also the gardens, is much more grand. <laughs> you know, it's quite nice. There's only one level. Only? Yeah, only one level. Very modest compared to the Versailles Palace, but yes, uh, perfectly manicured gardens as always in Versailles. And so with a little walk from the Grand Trianon, we have reached the highly, highly impressive um, Grand Canal. In the longest uh, stretch of the canal, the uh, lengthways side, it's uh, one mile from end to end. Just from the sheer grandiosity of the, of the canal and the trees on either side, the neatly trimmed hedges, you can really tell, you know, this was basically just Louis XIV flexing his divine right with control over nature. In Versailles as well, there's a huge number of fountains of which none are on today because it is the winter time. But fun fact, there actually used to be 1,500 fountains. There's only 300 now, only 300, a humble 300 now. And of course, it basically just stretches as far as the eye can see. All the way there, we are walking back, making the long slog back to the palace. What the heck? Also, I believe the gardens themselves are free entry. So, you know, if, you, if you've already seen the palace and you're in Versailles and you just want a nice relaxing stroll in the park, then, uh, you know, grab, a, grab some picnic food and chill in the gardens. You know, it's an amazingly beautiful place. Honestly, we are here in the winter time and I already know I need to come back here. Not necessarily to the palace because that's not going to change, but definitely to the gardens so I can see the, the trees in bloom, the flowers blooming, and of course the fountains spouting their water. Bye bye. Okay, that concludes our visit to the incredibly ornate and grand Versailles Palace. It is the royal palace. When you think of a palace in your head, Versailles comes to mind. And of course, it played a central role in French history. As historically important and significant Versailles is, you must ask yourself all of that land for couple of few royal people. You know, at the end of the day, Versailles was a monument to one man and it was Louis XIV, the Sun King. A line of kings who basically thought they had the divine right to rule over their subject. So it is a very interesting thing to observe as well because Versailles is such a revered site that was home to an establishment 
that the French people fought really hard to overthrow. So, you know, you have that, like, that duality. But honestly, definitely worth the visit. You're definitely not going to escape the crowds. It is winter and it was still absolutely packed. But hey, Ambi, that was a really great visit to Versailles. Even though it uh, started with a rocky start this morning with that stupid train ride, just entirely my fault. But whatever, we got, we got here in the end. So anyway, thank you guys for watching another one of our food and travel videos here, live from Versailles. And see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I must say, Yami, there's something very poetic about ending our Versailles visit at Burger King. <laughs> you know, a very Parisian experience. A very, uh, no, because, you know. Louis XIV would have loved this. Yeah, he would have. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs>